I was at a chalk talk with Wing Young Huey, a very brilliant photographer, um, and he asked, who does a photo belong to? The viewer? The subject? The one taking the photo? Who does it belong to? I share this photo here of my first trip back to Korea as a Korean adoptee, and I think, who belongs in this picture? And when I return to this scene, walking and marveling my way around the neon lights of Seoul, a part of me wished I could belong there. And I think the language of birth search or birth country, um, you know, homeland tours, that language in itself acknowledges a loss. It sets me up in some ways to be a perpetual foreigner here and there. And I ask, how do we as adoptees, you know, celebrate and reclaim those God-given layers of identity that are flowing through our veins at this very moment? And for some of us, those identities, those layers of who we were, have been stripped away through the process of international adoption. And we're asking, hey, how can we carve out time and space for us to think about that, process that, and remake some decisions about it, or perhaps make decisions about it for the first time ever in our life. Whatever age and stage you find yourself in right now, I truly believe that's possible. I truly believe that's possible. Korea sings to me at night means I was there my feet pressing into the land on which my mother walked and carried me for the first few years of my life. My eyes swollen with wonder and yearning as the lights and smells and sounds re-entered my body for the first time in decades. Yes, I was rejected in conversations, scorned at restaurants when I could only speak broken syllables. Confused looks from others in the streets and throughout the markets. But Korea sings to me at night means my feelings of isolation from Korea were not enough to quench my feelings of empowerment in Korea. Korea welcomed me because I welcomed it. It was a welcome because in faith, I chose to make it a welcome. It no longer had power over me. I got to choose how to be in that moment, to love. And then it was on my terms as I chose to hear what was once my home singing back to me. With its brilliant visuals, the intangible familiarity of my Korean siblings as we pass each other unaware. The deep breaths in through my nose and the affirmative exhales from my mouth as I reconnected with an old friend, my first caregiver. Of course, this is my personal experience and I'm convinced there is none like it. That's what makes the adoptee community so precious and so critical to the supporting of the adoptee community. Every story counts. Your story counts. We need to hear it. Thank you to caregivers who openly acknowledge that with us, that you willingly support our process of trying to reclaim and figure out and discover and navigate who am I, where am I from, and who was I meant to be. That should not be a threat to you. That should compel you. That should mobilize you as the caregiver to figure out what is your role in that? What is your job as we discover and process this adoption journey? Coming from this particular space and place and for some of us being taken away without our consent and being brought into a different place and space and being expected to just thrive and develop relationships without any kind of consequence from that whole interaction. Thank you to caregivers who are realizing that. Thank you to caregivers who say, hey, how can I help? What can I do? Let me do that with you, okay? I don't wanna stand in the way. I don't wanna be a barrier. I wanna actually be a guide if I can. I wanna be a support. I wanna cheer for you. I wanna walk alongside of you in that journey. I don't wanna take that journey away from you. Thank you so much to those caregivers who are doing that right now. Thank you to caregivers who are helping create 
a pathway to that kind of self-discovery and that meaning-making process for us. Thank you so much to the songs of nations yet to be heard. Thank you.